My team member started crying at work. What am I supposed to do? I hear this all the time from managers, from this specific phrase of I don't know what to do when my team members cry, to general feelings about how you handle people's emotions at work, including when people are different than you or react differently from you. So in this video, I'll talk about things as a manager to keep in mind, about why employees may get emotional at work, and what you can do to help to de-escalate situations. Now, overall, as a manager, something that you may not think of as much is the power dynamic that can happen at work. When you're the manager and you're giving feedback to someone, that can mean in the moment of, hey, giving them a correction on something or suggesting a way they do it, to broader performance reviews. For a lot of team members, they're walking into those situations, both in the moment or the bigger ones that they see coming, like a review, they're walking into those with fear because frequently there's so much tied up in people's work from how they're able to pay for their life, their family's life, people that depend on them, to their feelings of self-worth often are tied up into how they're you know, judged or assessed at work, the rating that they give, or even those levels of feedback. And so your team members often are walking into those afraid of losing their job, of being criticized, and people come into work with all different situations, from different backgrounds, the way that they've grown up. And you can't control that as a manager. But what you can control is just remembering that in situations, your team members may have a lot more emotions than you're realizing. And even things that may seem little to you, like, hey, I just gave them feedback on something, can feel really intimidating. And your team members may be walking out of that worried, am I going to get fired? So as a manager, one of the number one things that you can do is to communicate. And what I mean by that is often as a manager, you may think, oh, I don't have time to do these things. I don't have time. We have to get work done. We don't have time to like sit and handhold. But there's a real difference between doing nothing and just telling people to do work and, and all that and taking hours to have handholding conversations. Often it's just setting expectations and taking small investments in time, even seconds, can make a huge impact on your team members and the work they get done, which is likely what you're thinking of as a manager, but also for your leadership, that trust that you build over time. So some of the ways for communication can be setting expectations. I have heard also many situations of on a, a Friday afternoon, someone sending an invite to a team member for a Monday morning meeting. And that team member comes and the manager shocked to know that that team member spent the whole weekend thinking they were gonna get fired. The manager's like, why would you think that? And the team members might say, Look, I, I don't know, I just, I had no idea what this was about. So the communication can be giving context about a meeting. So if, for example, if you haven't had ongoing one-on-ones with your team members and you realize that you should have those, maybe you saw my tip in my manager one-on-one -on -one course, but is to let team members know, hey, I wanna start having these one-on-one -on -one meetings just so we can have a dedicated time that you can run through any things you need from me and I can help to give any additional information and so we can get on the same page. Again, one thing, because if you otherwise start setting up a one-on-one -on -one and people don't have a sense of why you're doing that, then people often fill that silence with the worst case scenario. So by setting up expectations, and that's for an ongoing meeting, or if you have a meeting about some sort of project, hey, I wanted to give you feedback and just talk through um, some additional tips so you can finalize it, um, in telling people what they can expect in that meeting. Setting people's expectations can help to make them feel less questioning and filling silence of what that meeting might be about with the worst case scenario and just provide it so they go, in, they go in having a sense of it. Also, if there's things that you need from someone in a meeting, often you may say, oh, we're going to talk about this, but there's things that you can have in that invite of, hey, um, can you look at the you know, first paragraph and you know, have some sort of feedback. But using some of those communications before meetings even so that it makes that meeting time more productive and less intimidating so the person doesn't show up and they're like, oh, I didn't know that's what we were going to talk about. So giving some of that information can, again, not only get things done more quickly because you may be able to do that editing or correction or teach someone something in that meeting rather than have them not have an idea of what's happening, but also giving that level of communication does build trust over time. The other is, again, just knowing in that meeting of setting expectations that someone may be thinking, okay, what's going to happen after this? Is this going to be you know, dinged on me for a performance review if someone makes a mistake? And so the other, in addition to before the meeting, is during that meeting, even at the start. And to level set, 
and even saying things like, you know, you worked on this. And so um, if it's the first time someone has worked on something, for example, saying, hey, I know this is the first time you've, wor you've worked on this. So I have, I have feedback and things that I've learned over time. And I, I know a lot of times you, know, you may have bosses that will give you an assignment and you know, you're just supposed to figure it out. That's not a way that I want anyone to learn. And, and I want you to find your own style. You don't need to do things the same way, exact same way I do. Uh, but I also, I want you to see examples, but also know you're, you're kind of free to find your own style. But to set that up and say assuring things like, this is the first time you've done this. Like, th this is this is great. Um, in giving some people that positive feedback and saying, hey, I'll just walk through things that I think next time um, incorporate this and it'll be even stronger or look at this and giving people examples. So again, just setting some of that communication. The others are for situations if someone made a mistake, um, things like that, someone in their pit of my stomach, they may start saying, I'm sorry. So in meetings, frequently you may have team members that say, I'm sorry a lot. And so stopping them and saying, hey, I, you don't need to apologize for having a conversation with me and getting my, you know, my support. I'm your boss. That's my job. And I'm glad that we're having this conversation. And so level setting in that way. There's a really cool chart that goes from saying, I'm sorry to thank you. Um, I'll put it up here. So if you look at it, also I'll, I'll link it. But this is just some, some examples of so many times that teaching your team members in the moment that like, they don't need to apologize to, for being human and saying some of those things. Because also you may have team members that even as they're getting feedback, they do get emotional. And that can come from all sorts of reasons. It may be situations where they were, they've were they been heavily criticized growing up or in their prior jobs. And so they bring a lot of emotions into that. And so those team members at the same time may be saying, I'm sorry. And again, always saying, you don't need to apologize for being human. And I'm here to, to help to support you. And I know at times it can be you know hard to hear a message and think, you know, what does this mean? And saying... I just want to help you be the best professional that you can be. And so it's okay. If you're, if you have emotions, it's okay. Um, and reassuring them, it can be really helpful as a manager to have Kleenex if you're in person and just know virtually your team members may feel awkward as well. And so having that team member and at times saying, if you want to go off camera, you're, you're fine, but you don't need to apologize for being human. I'm here. I'm here as your boss. And my job is to help you become the best professional that you can be. And so those communications can be really helpful as a manager. And so then it's after. So after that meeting, checking in with that, that team member, whether they made a mistake, whether they'd feedback, whether they did a good job, and same, and even in one-on-ones after, hey, I just wanted to let you know, let, let you know, I, I, you took this feedback from last time, you incorporated it, like, you know, hopefully you can see your development over time. And saying, you know, make sure that you're tracking because in six months from now, you may look back at this and think, oh my gosh, I would have done this completely different, differently. And that's great. That's what growth is. But having those communications with your team members and providing that reassurance and reminding them, your job is to help them as professionals. And as professionals, people often want to be perfect at work. And that's just not realistic. So overall, as a manager... You can't always prevent your employees from having those emotions and bringing really what seems like outsized emotions. Like this isn't that big of a deal. But to them, not like not belittling them and saying this isn't a big deal, saying it's okay, it's okay. But this is what my job is, is to give you feedback and help you be a professional. And, that, and that's, that's part of it. And, and you, I take feedback from you as well. And so some of those human conversations can be really helpful so that you are that leader that's not just helping to get the work done, but, but driving that performance with that level of empathy so that team members have that level of trust. So they know that when they have good things, you're gonna celebrate those wins. When you're giving that feedback, it's coming from actually a place of support. And that's how over time you can help people tremendously in their professional careers.